course by course. One by one. Till you shout, that's not the right cruise line. You better stop before they hit you with a copyright infringement. Play me off, Johnny. Ding 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 
of little bites, little snacks, or whatever it might be is, is a real plus for sure. And I think that's one of the themes that you're going to see as we continue discussing all the dining options on board Icon of the Seas is that they've really made a conscientious effort to spread these venues out, to give you a lot of different options to go here, there, and everywhere, because it's going to be a big ship. It's going to have a lot of people on it. I've always felt that Oasis-class ships do a great job of this. Quantum, to a certain extent, but I really feel like the Oasis-class ships, people are always hesitant to go on them because they are the largest and they have so many people. I feel like with the neighborhoods, there's always something for people to do. People are going to different areas and not congregating. They don't move in herds. Jurassic Park reference. But <laughs> I think Icon, it seems like they've really made an effort to say not just having all the dining here, we're going to put it here, we're going to put it over there, we're going to move this, we're going to move that, to really help spread people out. So that's that's cool to see. Uh, a couple other things that are going to be included in the returning favorites. El Loco Fresh. You know, we love that for that Tex-Mex situation there. Tacos, burritos, quesadillas, things like that. Uh, only thing that was noted as being different is the hours of operation. We were told 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. I typically found that to be, that's a little bit longer than normal. We, usually we see it around noon to six, even noon to five sometimes. So having those couple extra hours uh, will really be a big benefit. And there is another place that Royal Caribbean didn't even talk about today. And if you go on the Royal Caribbean app, if you're looking at Icon of the Seas and you pull up dining, you won't even see it. They never put it under dining, even though that's what we always use it for. A lot of people use it for. And that is Playmakers, the sports bar and arcade and grill and all that stuff. I get it. A lot of people are going to watch sports and have drinks, but they do have some bomb food there some of our favorite stuff that you can get and you do have to pay additional for it but it is not very expensive so i kind of threw that in i know i said we we're going to go over the the included things first i think i covered everything and that was included so i want to talk about playmakers because like i said it always gets forgotten uh for dining options they kind of advertise it more as like a bar and a place to watch sports but really good food there it will be returning and uh showing up on icon as well and that's actually a nice little segue. We kind of covered the things that were included from the returning favorites, and then we hit Playmakers, which isn't included. You have to pay extra for it, but it's not technically a specialty restaurant in Royal Caribbean's eyes. Now we will cover those venues that they do consider specialty restaurants. So there will be an additional charge to dine at all of these places. And you have to lead off with most people's favorite, Chops Grill, that is Royal Caribbean Steakhouse. You will find that on Icon Seas. It is going to be in Central Park, like it is on Oasis Class Ships. Something new here, there will be a butcher's display window of specialty cuts. So you will be able to go up and actually look at the different kind of cuts of meat that they will have. Choose the one you want. See it being prepared. It's, it's supposed to be a, a pretty cool thing added to that. Hooked Seafood is also returning for Icon of the Seas. So getting your seafood action in there. Additional cost. Not too much else to say about that they didn't really provide any details anything that's going to be different except for something new that will be inside of hooked but technically its own space we'll get to that in just a little bit uh izumi hibachi and sushi you know we love izumi oh so so delicious love that sushi action that will be returning as well of course an additional cost uh they blanket statemented it and said that the hibachi will be a cover charge and the sushi will be a la carte that's typically how it is. It kind of varies depending on if you have a package, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but you will have that for lunch and dinner. Something important to know here, a couple things. First of all, they are going from three hibachi tables to six. Six. Joker reference. <laughs> six. So they are doubling the amount of tables and thus doubling the occupancy that can be served for hibachi. So that's great because that can get in high demand. I think the biggest thing to note here with this Izumi hibachi and sushi on Icon of the Seas is that it actually will be in Central Park. It's going to offer some alfresco dining options there. Really interesting place to put that. And there's something really cool going to be attached to that. Again, that's going to be something new. We'll get to that in just a little bit. But glad to see Izumi, Hibachi, and Sushi will be on board. And the other thing, last specialty restaurant that's a returning favorite that we're really excited to see, Giovanni's. But not just Giovanni's table. This is Giovanni's Italian Kitchen and Wine Bar. We've seen this on Freedom of the Seas, Wonder of the Seas, and Odyssey of the Seas. It is delicious every time. We absolutely loved it. Interesting thing to note here, kind of the opposite of Azumi. Azumi goes into Central Park. Giovanni's comes out on Wonder of the Seas. That's where it was located. You could dine outside. For the first time ever, Royal Caribbean is putting a specialty restaurant 
inside of the Royal Promenade and a true specialty restaurant because Playmakers has been in the Royal Promenade and it costs extra. But an actual true specialty restaurant is going inside the Royal Promenade. And I guess that is semantics. That's how they uh, spieled it today in the presentation. But now that I'm thinking about this in live time, as I'm telling you, the Royal Esplanade on Quantum Class ships has Azumi in it and Wonderland and things like that. So I guess they're they're like really on the semantics. The Esplanade doesn't count. The Promenade though, this is the first one. At least that's what they said. So that's what I'm going with. Anyway, Giovanni's Italian Kitchen and Wine Bar coming in. This is interesting though. They said they have changed the structure of the Royal Promenade to put windows in. So you will be able to have some window seating inside of Giovanni's, which is really great. And of course it is the Italian Kitchen and the Wine Bar. So if you're not looking for a full meal, you would just want to grab a drink or some light eats. Typically they have on the other ships had light eats there. I hope they do here on Icon as well. You would have that option at the wine bar right, right next door. They're kind of all there together. So that is going to cover most of, pretty much all, of the returning favorites. I'm going to segue now before we get into the new additions, things that are debuting on Icon of the Seas. I'm going to segue with sweet specials, sweet restaurants. So these uh, restaurants, venues are only available for guests staying in suites. There are two of them. One is a returning favorite, one is brand new. Hence why I feel like this is a good segue point. So the returning favorite is Coastal Kitchen. You've seen this on other ships that have the Royal Suite class, the Oasis class ships, the Quantum class ships. Uh, Coastal Kitchen is basically like an elevated main dining room. It's a lot smaller, it's a lot more intimate. I think it has a lot better food. I think most people would agree with that who have experienced it. Not too many changes with Coastal Kitchen. It's still going to be available for the star and sky level guests, sea guests for dinner and only when it is available. And the biggest thing though is, I was kind of doing that, it kind of set me up, two levels to this Coastal Kitchen. So it will span two decks, so a much larger space and it will have views of the Aqua Dome. That's going to be that new area where they're going to have the Aqua Theater and do all the shows inside of. So it's going to be looking into that from the suite neighborhood. Now the new dining venue for suite guests is only available for those top two levels, the star and the sky, not for suite or sea guests, excuse me, uh, at least according to the information that Royal Caribbean provided today. And that is going to be the Grove. And the Grove is going to also be al fresco. So dining outside is going to be a lot smaller. I think they said about 32 people it could accommodate, something like that. And it's going to be serving up a Mediterranean cuisine for breakfast and lunch. And they will also have afternoon light bites. So again, only those two higher levels of the Royal Suite class will have access to that if Royal Caribbean holds true to what they said today. Now that we've covered all the returning favorites, let's transition to those new venues, things making their Royal Caribbean debuts on board Icon of the Seas. I'm gonna save my favorite for last. That's how I like to operate. Saving the best for last, so we'll get to what I think is just oh, an awesome addition coming up in just a bit. Let's start though with some other really cool options making their debut, starting with Celebration Table. This is the thing that I mentioned is going to be with Hooked, but it's not actually Hooked, it's just inside of it. And this is essentially the new era of Chef's Table. It is a private room, it closes off completely, has its own door and everything like that for 12 people, really kind of like a VIP experience. And it's going to have a prefix menu. They're gonna have four different cuisines that you can choose from. So of course this will be an additional cost. And I wanna mention, I, I think a lot of people are probably gonna ask how much is this, how much is that? During the webinar today, they said they have not finalized pricing or pricing structures, so wait and see. <laughs> but if you are willing to pay the extra amount, it sounds like Celebration Table is really going to be a great spot for having a celebration. I think that's why they named it that, it was really to kind of designate that this is the place for a VIP experience, this is a place for you and your party to come and have your own private event, own private space, and then just enjoy each other's company. Now the other special new dining venue that I alluded to earlier when I was talking about Izumi is going to be Izumi in the Park. And this, I think, is a much, much needed idea. This is going to be Royal Caribbean's first specialty dining that is grab and go. So it's gonna be located right next to Izumi Sushi and Hibachi, of course, again, in Central Park, and you will be able to get this on the go. 
grab it and go. It's meant to take away from the window. They're going to have some sushi, of course. They're going to have some street foods, different things like that. I think this is a brilliant idea because every cruise we're on where Izumi Sushi is present, people are always asking if they can get it to go. It's been very hit or miss, mostly miss. So I think this kind of addresses and remedies that. They are very excited about their taiyaki ice cream. It's gonna be served in a bubble cone, has all these drizzles and toppings on it. It's supposed to be very picturesque and Instagrammable and whatever the kids say these days. But yeah, an all day window with portable boxes, grab and go takeaway for your sushi and street foods. I think that's a really nice addition. And if I didn't mention already, that will be an additional cost. Now moving around the ship, we do have a couple of other new additions. Let's start with something that is included with your cruise fare. I'm very excited about this. This is Pearl Cafe. You know that if you've been doing any research, you've been keeping up with Icon of the Seas, you know that they're gonna have the Pearl and we're not exactly sure what all it's going to be. There's a gonna be serving different purposes. There's a very big space though, but they're gonna have Pearl Cafe there. And this is, in my opinion, what it sounds like. It's gonna be kind of like a mix between Cafe Promenade and Cafe 270, which if you've been on Quantum Class ships, you've experienced that. We're huge fans of Cafe 270. It sounds like it's gonna have a similar kind of menu where you can get sandwiches, uh, salads, things like that. Again, it is complimentary. But the thing that reminds me of Cafe Promenade is that this is supposed to be open 24 seven. So around the clock, you should be able to go to the Pearl Cafe. It is kind of grab and go style. And there are going to be big windows with ocean views. So a nice little spot to have a seat there. And again, reminiscent of Cafe 270 when you go in there and you can see out the back of the ship. So that sounds nice. Now on top of Icon of the Seas, they are going to have the Thrill area. Thrill Island, I believe is what they're calling it. And it's where all the water slides and all the activities and all that stuff going to be up at the top of the ship and they are putting a dining venue up there called base camp now the interesting thing with base camp is that it is mixed part of it is included with your cruise fare in fact most of it is included with your cruise fare but some things will come at an additional cost now base camp is going to be serving up snacks kind of little light bites kind of thing there will be a bar cart there as well so if you're looking to get some drinks as I mentioned, most of it will be complimentary, some things additional cost. Uh, they gave crispy shrimp bao buns as an example, as well as soft pretzels with cheese. So anyone's guess at this point which of those items or what other items will be there and which ones will have the additional charge or not, but it is going to be mixed, which I think is interesting. I mentioned the Aqua Dome area earlier where they're going to have the Aqua Theater shows. A new venue for Icon of the Seas is also bringing brand new dining options, including the first ever food hall on board a Royal Caribbean ship. This is gonna be called the Aquadome Market. And the really cool thing about this is gonna offer a lot of different cuisines, but is going to be included with your cruise fares. So you don't have to pay additional for this. Five different stands located in the Aquadome Market. One's gonna be serving crepes. One's gonna have some Mediterranean food. One is gonna be centered around mac and cheese and different kind of flavors of that. One is going to have some sandwiches and salads. And then one is going to have some Japanese cuisine. Asian cuisine, different kind of things like that. So sounds excellent. I love this idea. We've kind of seen this in the cruise industry lately. Virgin Voyages comes to mind. They kind of did away with the traditional buffet and said, here's our basic food hall concept. Go around to all these different stands and get these different cuisines, which are included with your cruise fare. So kind of seeing Royal Caribbean taking a page out of that book, instituting their first ever food hall inside of the Aquadome area. So we're very excited about that. And Royal Caribbean did note that this will be open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So you'll have plenty of options to try those various cuisines. Now, our last few dining options that I wanna cover before we get to the big one I like to save for the end are all going to be located in the Surfside area of Icon of the Seas. This is essentially the boardwalk. What the boardwalk was on Oasis class ships, they're calling it now Surfside. It's very family oriented, gonna be on the back of the ship, open air, gonna have some pools, carousel, lots of fun stuff going on out there. And they've added some different dining venues there, including Surfside Eatery. Interesting thing with Surfside Eatery is this is also a buffet. So in addition to the Windjammer buffet, you will have Surfside Eatery as a buffet option, but this is catered more to kids classics and those cuisines. This will be open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner as well. So a really great option if you have a picky eater or if you just want some kid cuisine like us, not, not the little pre-packaged ones, not, not the brand kid cuisine, but foods that kids will enjoy. You will find that at the Surfside Eatery. You'll also have Surfside Bites down there. It's gonna be a separate area, but we'll be in that same Surfside area. Complimentary snacks coming in. It look, uh, They listed popcorn chicken, 
hot dogs, burgers, donut holes, all available complimentary snacks there, as well as sprinkles, which is going to be serving up soft serve ice cream, all located there in the Surfside Bites area. Now, in addition to those two, you will also find Pier 7. Pier 7 is going to be the first ever Royal Caribbean specialty dining venue that is catered towards families, catered towards kids, family-oriented specialty dining. Not that kids or families didn't go to specialty dining before, but this is actually going to be centered around them, catered towards them, and with families in mind. And this is also going to be open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's going to be right next to the playground area that's going to be in the Surfside area, so you'll be able to sit there and enjoy and enjoy some food and watch the kids play on the playground if you'd like. This is coming in at an additional cost because it is a specialty restaurant, but it is going to have kind of beachside bites, California, Baja kind of cuisine menu options there. So it sounds like it'll be really good. Very curious to see how they pull that off. All right, here we are, the final venue to unveil for Icon the Seas. And maybe other people aren't gonna be as excited about this as I am, as we are, I know the rest of the family is, we are all looking forward to this. It is the Empire Supper Club. And this is going to be a 1930s New York themed dinner and a show kind of venue. It's, it's gonna, not so much a theater show, but there's going to be a live three piece band playing while you eat and they will actually change the music they're playing to accompany the courses that you are enjoying. So it's gonna be an eight course menu. Of course, this is an additional cost for sure. You're gonna to have to pay extra for this, but it is gonna be a little bit more lavish, a little bit more high end. You can also pair those cuisines, those, uh, those different courses with different beverages if you'd like. So you can have the pairings to match up based on what the chef and the sommelier or whoever's in charge suggests. So very excited about this. It's gonna have American cuisine. Again, 1930s, New York style, very throwback, a little more elegant. Maybe we wanna, wanna dress up a little bit. Maybe even me, maybe even I will dress up to go to the Empire Supper Club. I am that excited about it. And they will have two seatings a night. So everyone will be accommodated, uh, assuming it will be every night. I don't, I guess they didn't technically clarify that. They just said it would be two seatings per night. So at least the nights that it is open, uh, I guess we don't know for sure yet if that would be every single night of the cruise, but at least they would be able to accommodate more. Empire Supper Club is going to be, they're calling it in Central Park. It's kind of like, you know, an Oasis class where you come from the front, you go through the elevators and stairwells, and then you walk out into Central Park. It's right there. So if you were in Central Park, and you kind of go through the doors, that's where you'll find the Empire Supper Club. So very, very, very over the moon excited about that one. And all of these different venues sound really great. So thanks to Royal Caribbean for giving us the information here today. Getting us more excited for our cruise again. We will be on the inaugural sailing of Icon of the Seas, January 27th, I think it is, 2024. Seven nights. Looking forward to it. All Icon of the Seas sailings for this point in time are either going to be, uh, they're all going to be seven nights, either Eastern or Western Caribbean, and every single one will include a stop at Perfect Day at Coco K. Okay, so be sure to check that out. And with our main topic for today's video covered, Spider-Man Potato Head is swinging in with this week's questions for our reoccurring segment, The Mailbag, where I will answer your questions, your inquiries, your comments, your statements, not so much your concerns. Feel free, whatever you wanna send. Uh, leave those in the comments of this video. If you have a question, you want something answered, or on Instagram, wherever we post those opportunities to send those, you continue to send them and we appreciate it, as well as if you have any suggestions on future topics for TA Talk videos. All right, let's go ahead and get it started. I just dropped Mr. Potato Head Spider-Man's legs. Don't pay any mind to that. First question is from YouTube. It is from Ethan Cole, and it says, how is it at the start of becoming a TA, that's the first part, have mold around the idea of trying my hand, do what you love and you will never work a day in your life. I figured I could try a profession around something I love, cruising. So, to answer the first part, how is it the start of becoming a TA? I have talked about this at length, or at least our story in the very first, just one, first episode of the TA talk of what it was like getting started. Definitely not as easy as most people would think. And maybe that's not everyone's story, but it was certainly ours. It took us years and years and years to become profitable, working multiple jobs and doing a lot of hard work, putting ourselves in debt, blah, blah, blah. Check out that TA talk number one if you want, if you want the full details on that. But always encourage people to follow your dreams 
find something you love, take that jump as long as you've done the research and you're prepared, but we definitely encourage you to jump. We know we have not regretted it. All right, question number two. And this one is from Instagram from Miss Abby Solo. Do you have to have plenty of experience traveling to become a travel agent? And the answer is no, you do not. I don't think so. I think it definitely helps. The more we travel, the more experience we have, the easier it is, is it, it is for us to assist our clients and answer questions and things like that. So I do believe firmly that if you're going to become a travel agent, you should definitely be looking to travel. Be prepared again to invest all of that money into doing that. You do not just get free travel around the clock, despite what people think. I don't care if it's because you're a travel agent or if it's because you're on YouTube or you have Instagram or any of those things. You have to earn that stuff. You're not going to have it right at the beginning. So uh, I do think it's very beneficial to have that experience, but not completely necessary. Maybe, though, it's a good idea to get some before you make that jump. All right, third and final question for today's video. This is from Megan on YouTube. What recommendations do you have to start being a travel agent? <laughs> First steps or things you specifically recommend? So I think I might, I'm considering doing a, a future TA talk about this. I don't know if I'm gonna do it yet or not about you know the detailed answer to that question about becoming a travel agent. Again, I already just said it in the last question, just tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of research. Be prepared, look at everything. You have to be prepared if you're gonna start a business of any kind, right? So just approach it from that general macro sense. What are some good business practices? What are some things to think of? Taxes, licenses, fees, all those different things. Do not, at least my recommendation, do not become a travel agent because you want free travel or you want reduced travel. That That is, Fool's gold, it's pyrite, it's it's no good. So again, research, 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 be prepared, have a financial parachute, and be prepared to be stressed and work a lot if you wanna be successful at it. Good luck. All right, friends, that is going to do it for this week's installment of the TA Talk. As always, I wanna thank you for joining me. I'm really having a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of fun doing this and wanna keep it rolling. So again, if you have any suggestions on topics you'd like to see covered in a future TA Talk video, please feel free to leave a comment down below. As always, if you're interested in booking your own travel, of course we are travel agents. Our services are completely free to you. We never charge any fees or costs What? So ever. So feel free to reach out via the travel agent information. It's in the description of this video and every other video on the channel. With that said, I'm going to sign off for today's TA Talk. I will see you back here in the home office for the next one. But until then, happy travels. And hopefully they're happy travels to somewhere that has some happy food, like Icon of the Seas. See ya. Mm -hmm.